This week's Parsha is Parsha's Chayi Sara. We have a contrast of personalities in this week's Parsha between that of Ephron and that of Rivka, of Rebecca. Ephron was, was a, a non Jew, a Canaanite, who Abraham had to deal with in order to purchase a burial plot for his wife, Sarah, after she died. The, our sages tell us, our rabbis tell us that Ephron was a stingy person. He had an eye in her eye, an evil eye. He had a stingy eye. And because of this stinginess that he had, he ended up lacking. That's the words that our rabbis use. He wound up lacking. This is referring to, subsequent to the actual sale of the burial plot to Abraham, the Torah writes, writes, Ephron's name lacking with a letter missing. Lacking, so to speak. That's, that's what our sages mean when they say that as a result of his stinginess he was lacking. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Rivka, we have Rebecca, the nice young girl who was chosen as a wife for Isaac. And the story, the lead up, as many, many of us know, the story the lead up to her being chosen as that wife for, for Isaac is that she does a tremendous amount of kindness, a tremendous amount, amount of chesed, of generous giving, of gracious giving, almost unlimited, with tremendous strength of character and tremendous, an unbelievable sense of giving and, and, uh, and of um, care. At the beginning, she says, I'm going to give a little, as she says to Eliezer, Abraham's trusted servant, who was, who was charged with the mission of bringing back a wife for Isaac. He was the, one of the first matchmakers that the Torah speaks about. That she says to him, I'm going to give you a little bit of water. I'll give you water for yourself. We know that El Eliezer, this servant of Abraham, came with a huge entourage. He came with many people, many other servants. He came with camels. He came with many people. So she says, I'm going to give you to drink. But then she ends up not only giving him to drink, but also when it comes to the act, when it comes to action, she gives him to drink. She gives all the men to drink. She gives all the camels to drink. And camels, as we know, drink a lot. And that's a, it's, that's a huge job for someone who the sages say is only three years old at the time, that she goes out of her way to not only just say and be a big talker, but also, she's not a big talker. She says a little bit, but she leaves her action. She leaves her her talking for the, for the actions. She lets her actions speak for themselves. Ephron, on the other hand, is someone who our rabbis tell us was a big talker. He spoke a lot. He said, Abraham, we're good friends between you and I. Between you and I, what's, the, what's this field, this burial plot? Take it for free. First he says, take it for free. No problem. You're, you're a grief-stricken grief husband who just lost his wife. Take it, no problem. And then at the end, as, as we know, at the end he ends up selling it for a very, very stiff, very steep price. Now, this contrast in personalities is very striking. Avram Avinu, Abraham, our patriarch, and his, his household, Rebecca, who was, this, who was his future daughter-in-law at the time, we know that Abraham's hallmark is this idea of chesed, of giving graciously, um, very generously, where does that stem from? This idea of being able to selflessly give in a, in a very gracious way. What motivates a person to give generously? This giving obviously stems from a person who has his priorities, he has his life's priorities straight. He knows that money and physical possessions is something that is God-given, something that is a present from God. But he realizes, or she, re she realizes, since this money is not that all important to me, I know that this was given to me by God because there are other people in this world who are lacking, other people in this world who are needy. And I gotta share it. I have to give of it, of my time, of my efforts, of my, my resources, my finances to others who are in need. She knows that money in and of itself is not what makes the person happy. So, so often it's the giving, it's the giver, the one who's able to give the kindness, the one who's able to facilitate the kindness, who ends up being satisfied and happy. At the other end of the spectrum, we have Ephraim. He lives for money. As the verse states in Exiliases, it says that 
that one who loves money will not be satisfied by money. Oh, Kesef, Eliezer Kesef. One who loves money will never be satisfied with money. He can't part with his money because he needs his money. His money is all that he lives for. So our sages say that such a person will never ever be happy. Why? Because it's impossible to satiate the person's pursuit of physical needs, a person's desire for physical needs. So this is what really the sages mean when they say that the, the verse says, the verse states, Ephron's name lacking. It's not just a punishment for Ephron that for all of eternity there's a, a verse in the Torah that has his name missing the letter. It's a punishment for him as well. For all of eternity that that's how it's written in the Torah. But it's a lesson. It's a lesson that a person who's constantly his entire drive is for physical pursuits and the pursuit of, of, of money and, and things is never really going to be happy. He will be intrinsically lacking. He himself will be lacking. So the lesson that we learn is to be like the house of Abraham, our ancestor, to be like Rebecca, to be like those who realize that the pursuit of, of and the endless pursuit of, of money and, 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 and things in this world is not just, not just to, to bring about a, a, a self, a, a, uh, a desire for ourselves, but it's really to spread to others and to share our, our, our wealth and our resources and our time and our efforts with others. And with that, we will attain true happiness.